fight against xenophobia seems to be gaining waves as the chairman of the Nigerian In Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabirewa, has expressed satisfaction over the justice meted out to a South African police constable, Austin Luciano Reynolds, who killed a Nigerian, Ebuka Okoli. Now, Reynolds was charged on four counts of murder but, and robbery after shooting Okoli at close range and robbing him during an unauthorized raid. However, isn't it too early for us to celebrate a win? I mean, many Nigerians have been hurt by this menace. Shouldn't we be pushing for more? Well, joining us to discuss this once again is still Evans Ufeli. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you, Evans, for staying with us. Thank you. So, the, the issue of Evans is a singular issue because we still, I still remember the insurance boss who was strangled in a hotel room. It had nothing to do with xenophobia. She went for a conference and she died in her hotel room. We still have not gotten any information whatsoever on that issue. And right after that, students were killed, same South Africa, and then we had the xenophobic issue where a lot of Africans were killed and mostly Nigerians. In fact, we had to airlift Nigerians back to Nigeria. Should we be celebrating? You know, there are people who say small wins need to be celebrated. What's your take? Well, uh, these, are, these are baby steps. I mean, we, we should commend the South African government. How be it? We? Uh, how be it? How be it? Uh, late. It's better late than never, because um, where you have such kind of conviction, it sends a message that is no longer business as usual. I I know that uh, when these attacks happen, I see a lot of videos where the police will just stand and be watching. They are, they are indifferent, really. That the hit is uh, beyond the scale on the South African citizen. The, the hate has also taken over the South African institutions. Uh, one time, one of the uh, police leader, leader of the police came out to say that South Africa is the only country where you have 80% uh, foreigners. <laughs> I mean, and trying to justify the attack and all that. So, I mean, you, you have international ties with other countries, mm -hmm. okay? So if you do not want uh, them to come into your country. Don't grant them visas. You can isolate yourself. You can decide not to associate with the world. You can shut your doors. You can shut your doors. You can do that, okay? But you know that is impossible because South African businesses in Nigeria are rated among the five top businesses in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And then they repatriate all their funds to South Africa by our laws. We have a flexible transactional because we are looking for investors and all that. Nigeria contributes heavily to the economy of South Africa. Nigeria contributes heavily to the history of uh, the disbandment of our party in South Africa. Nigeria contributed a lot to see South Africa, you know, as a younger brother uh, pull out from the shackles of uh, their colonial engagement with their colonial masters. Now, the result today is different because they believe that Nigerians are thieves. Nigerians are the reason they do not have jobs because their government also have consistently failed them. And then ha having failed them, the government has also leveraged on the fact that because of foreigners, that is why indigents cannot get jobs. Okay, and because <laughs> South Africa also have a very, I mean, the, 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 the citizens have a very low level of um, education. Uh, most of the times you find out that they don't really go to school as much. There are those who are schooled, but there's a larger chunk of them who are unschooled. And then that plays a role in literacy, I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I, I might be wrong, but should, I mean, the policies of many countries is to prioritize its citizens before over any other person. And I'm talking about this in terms of job placement, yes. in terms of opportunities. Not normally, a, a country would prioritize its people and then only go for professionals where their people are deficient. Yes. But in South Africa's case, it seems to be the opposite. It Can that even, no, 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 I'm just saying, there are more professionals from outside the country, not just Nigerians, okay. who are in South Africa. Yes. But then the picture is painted to seem that these people only just migrate to their countries to take over their jobs. But when in reality, as you have explained, it's not the truth. It's not the truth. Okay, if you look at South Africa have a lot of Nigerian doctors, many of them, 
Nigerian doctors working in South Africa. That is because that labor, that skill, the, the medical profession is a special skill, it's a professional skill. So that skill is lacking. So they need doctors. And then we have more than enough of them. People migrate, okay? And then talk about the cities, the youths, Nigerian youths or African youths in the streets, especially Nigerian youths, do not even work. They do petty trade. Mm -hmm. These people who are doing petty trade are the people that these citizens are referring to as people who have come to take their job. Have you watched some of the videos during the xenophobic attack? A South African will run into a shop, pick a tin of milk, open it and drink and be running. We don't do that here. We don't do that. That looks like hunger. That looks like uh, something Poverty. is wrong. So it looks like there's some um, psychological issues uh, that w w the government need to address. Because if you look at it, the unemployment rate in South Africa have consistently been between 56% and 40, uh, 50, 56% and 58%, consistently wow. for the past uh, eight years. So the government have really failed her people. Now, instead of the government to look for a strategy or devise policies that will make the citizen to see the truth and then embrace the truth and then possibly develop themselves more, or possibly diverse the, the economy better and then give them a good life. But here you have a situation where there is an assumption and a dangerous conclusion that these foreigners are your problem. It couldn't have been it couldn't have been so. I know there are foreigners who are out there to commit crime, to commit offense, to steal, to rob, to do drugs, I know that. But is that but not the job not of the Justice Department in, this, in South Africa to deal with instead of the people taking laws in their hands? Or could it also be that the Justice Department has failed them? One of, one of the, the leaders that are supposed to constitute the Justice Department came out to say that South Africa is the only country where you have 80% foreigners, that the, the indigents are displaced. So when, when the leader of thought is saying that to his people, he's, he's asking them to, you know, go violent. He's calling for uprising. He's calling for conflict. And that's exactly what has happened. And then the president of South Africa, most of the time, seems to be indifferent. Today, he's against, against uh, 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 xenophobia. He's talking tough. Tomorrow he's relaxed. You don't actually understand whether there's a firm policy against xenophobic attack. There, no, no one can tell whether it's a firm policy. But with this judgment, this is coming from the judicial system. Mm -hmm. Perhaps this will send some message to mm. would be okay um, uh, people who perpetrators. perpetrators who may likely want to take this route, and they will understand that the world is not a global village. I so I speak to you for the past three months, the xenophobic attack brought serious, serious downfall of the rating of South Africa the world over. And because, that is why because, the government is waking up. Because countries like Rwanda, um, I think Zimbabwe, you know, they, they literally returned the favor. Uh, of evil towards them. I, I think Rwanda pulled out of uh, the summit. Yes. And same for other African countries. Uh, so yes, it has affected the economy. But this isn't the first. This isn't, this isn't the second. We have had xenophobic attacks and it keeps happening and then it dies down and then they, they have a comeback. Do you see this stopping anytime soon? The, 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 the prosecuting of this one person does it even start to address the issue in any way? So much so that in the future, we see South Africans who, if they are aggrieved, they would go to their government instead of killing non-South Africans. Yeah, we, I say so, these are baby steps, okay? It may not solve the problem because it looks really very remote. I mean, you have a lot of cities, you have a lot of cities in South Africa, you have Joburg, Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, all over. I mean, you have conviction in just one remote area. Mm -hmm. Would that be what we now cover the entire... There are people in South Africa that may not even get this news, especially those who perpetrate this kind of offense. They may not even uh, yeah. uh, get to know about it, okay? So, but what I'm saying is that 
the government is responding to world criticism. The government is picking the vibes from all corners of the world because xenophobic attack is terrorism. It's terror. It's terror. When you attack people, kill them, burn them, it's terrorism. And you know the world frowned highly against terrorism. Mm -hmm. The United Nations, which is resident in the US, they frown against it. Okay? So the South Africans, they are beginning to understand that this thing we are treating with kid gloves is most likely going to affect us dearly in future and cut us off. They are doing this in their own interest, not because they suddenly just like, they just woke up today and said, okay, we love Nigerians. That couldn't have been true, okay? They are just doing this for the purposes of their future, for the purpose of their international engagement and the ratings, the, 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 uh, the international economy. relations. Yes, international relations. That is exactly what they're doing because they've had a lot of bashing all over the world that this is absolute terrorism, no matter what you call it. It is not right anyhow you look at it. It grounds contrary to everything human that people who are foreigners should be killed. So, okay, now that you are killing foreigners, have you gotten the jobs? I was about to ask, in uh, Abikeda Beri's case, she's celebrating a win. And you have also said that, you know, it's okay to, um, because this sends a message. But should she be saying this or talking tough? Should she say this and talk tough, or should she be talking tough and saying, well, yeah, we see you, but we want to see more of these people, you know, heading to the gallows, in a sense, in a, in a sense. Because I know of people who said they've lost families, or family members in this xenophobic attacks, and not just the one that happened this year, but several others. And how do you get justice for the insurance boss who was strangled, innocently invited to a conference, and she was strangled in her hotel room. It's not that she went to a concert, it's not that she, went, she, she owns a shop or anything. She was strangled to death. What happens to the families of those people? How do they get justice? And how can the government of this today prove to Nigerians that the lives of those who were lost has a form of value? We, we, we cannot get justice in that kind of case without the sincere imputes of the South African government and that's the said hotel because there are CCTV cameras in that hotel if not in the room at least there are CCTV cameras that will you know capture who came into the room and who went out who did what when when and how mm -hmm. okay so if they are sincere with themselves they should be able to provide that information for proper investigation alongside the autopsy that was carried out. So if we have that information, then they can use that information to forensically track those who perpetrated the offense and then commit them to trial and possibly convict them. Okay, so if, if they, they are not going to cooperate to that extent, then I don't see any sincerity in whatever they have done because this is not a woman who went there to take your job, as you claim. She went for a conference, and then this is what she got. So it's, it's a pity that uh, Africa have, have, have refused to form a synergy to grow, because we, 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 are, we are allergic to growth. There are people who make excuses and say, oh, we have a language barrier. Just a few African countries who speak English, the rest of them speak French or Portuguese and that, Creole. That's, 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 not, that's, that's ancient, archaic. Uh, like I said, uh, people uh, make excuses. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Those people who make those excuses should know that in the United Nations, the United Nations Congress and Conferences, there are people, leaders from all over the world, diverse languages, but technology has breached the gap. The uh -huh. world is now a global a village. village. Yes. Mm -hmm. So technology, has, where you, you speak into a microphone in English, it interprets in the person's language. We have technology that has breached that gap. The world is now one. So it's not left to the world to decide whether it wants to grow or destroy itself. Mm. That is why America is strongly against nuclear energy. 
and then nuclear weapons that some countries claim they keep, they have, just because they want the world to have cohesion, they want the world to build synergy, they want the world to grow together. Africa should not be left. As I look at Rwanda, Rwanda is doing very well. If we have 10 African presidents working at the pace of you know, the president of that country, we would grow faster than we ever imagined. But we have countries who are giving us a very negative vibe in this engagement. Africa is supposed to come together. There are a lot of areas where we have united in terms of art, culture, literature. In 1977, in Festac Town, Nigeria, Nigeria hosted the entire African space to a world-class art and cultural festival that opened of Africa to the world, the beauty, the heritage, the dynasty of the African state, the entire world embraced it. Yeah. Since 1977 to date, why haven't we replicated that over and uh, over and over again to build I'm an economy? I'm sure we're waiting for the organizers of Festec 77 to come do it again. <laughs> but I want to say thank you to you, Evans uh, Ufeli. Yeah. He's a legal practitioner. We'll take a short break and bring you our plus report today because Festus Kiyamo, the Minister of State for Niger Delta Affairs uh, at the Labour Ministry, uh, had some things to say concerning the social media bill earlier today. And it caused many Nigerians to react uh, and share their own views about the social media bill. So take a look and after this, I will give you my take. Time for my take. Here we go again. Still asking questions as to why the federal government has refused to release IMN's leader, Elsa Exaki, three years after the court ordered his bail. What exactly is responsible for this government's blatant and outright disregard for the rule of law? I wonder. I mean, a government who does not obey the law, picks and chooses which law to obey, is that a good government? How does this government intend to fight corruption when they are at odds with the courts and the law. I guess maybe time will tell. Abike Dabri has expressed satisfaction over the justice meted out on uh, the police officer that killed a Nigerian in South Africa. Yes, great news, but is this satisfactory? How about the lives lost in South Africa? 
who will get justice for them and their families? The insurance boss that was strangled in her hotel room, legitimately going for an event in South Africa. Shouldn't our government be pressing for more? I mean, we Nigerians need to see what value that you place on us because every Nigerian life matters. So we're watching. And I am Mary Anacle. It's been Plus Politics.